Welcome to part two of the second derivative of parametric equations. I wanted to provide one more example of how to determine the second derivative of parametric equations and also to determine where the curve will be concave up or concave down. You may want to pause the video here to review the formulas for the first and the second derivative of parametric equations. But we're going to go ahead and jump to our example. We want to determine the open intervals for which the curve is concave up and concave down on the closed interval from zero to two pi. So we'll start by finding the first derivative. Well dy dt, we do have to apply the chain rule like we did in the last video. We're gonna have six sine squared t times cosine t divided by dx dt, which will be six cosine squared t times negative sine t. And this simplifies nicely to negative tangent t. Now we'll find the second derivative. So we'll find the derivative of the first derivative with respect to t, and then divide that by dx dt. Well the derivative of tangent t is secant squared t, so this derivative will be negative secant squared t. And then we found dx dt here, so we'll have six cosine squared t times negative sine t. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Notice we have a negative and a negative, so it'll become positive. And secant squared t is the same as one over cosine squared t. So we'll have one over six cosine to the fourth t sine t. Now again, this will never equal zero because our numerator is equal to one, but this will be undefined when cosine t or sine t is equal to zero. So cosine t will be equal to zero at pi over two and three pi over two, and sine t is equal to zero at zero, pi, and two pi. Remember, our interval is only from zero to two pi, so we don't have to use zero and two pi to create the intervals. But we are going to have four different intervals. The first one will be from zero to pi over two. Then we'll go from pi over two to pi. And then we'll have from pi to three pi over two. And then lastly, we'll have from three pi over two to two pi. And now we need to determine the sign of the second derivative in each of these intervals, and then draw our conclusions. Now one thing that might be helpful to determine the sign of the second derivative here is to consider what quadrant we're in. Because this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. Well in the first quadrant, both sine and cosine are positive, so the second derivative will be positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive, so this will be positive. Cosine is negative, but we're raising it to the fourth power, so this will also be positive. Therefore, the second derivative is positive. Now in the third quadrant, both sine and cosine are negative, so the sine of t will be negative. Cosine of t will also be negative, but we're raising it to the fourth power, which makes it positive, so this fraction would be negative. And then in the fourth quadrant, sine is negative and cosine is positive. So this will be positive, this would be negative, resulting in a negative fraction. So now we know that it's concave up on this interval, concave up on this interval, concave down in this interval, and concave down in this interval. So quadrant one and two should be concave up, quadrant three and four should be concave down. Let's take a look. Here's the first quadrant and the second quadrant. Notice this, pe notice this piece of the curve is concave up and so is this. And in the third and fourth quadrants, it's concave down. Remember we gave the intervals in terms of t, which represent the angles for these parametric equations. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.